even though, you know, we dealing with the Catholic Church, you know, we got to get into the source of where the Catholics got their fundamental teachings from, okay? And they got their fundamental teachings from the Greeks, to be more precise, the, uh, the Ptolemy, okay, that invaded Egypt, or better, Alexander, Alexander invaded Egypt in 332 BC, okay? That's when he invaded Egypt in 332 BC. And he died, and he died about nine years later. Something like that, you know what I'm saying? Thank, thank the ancestors, okay? And so, you know, before the, Greek, before the Greeks conquered, the Persians was dead. So Alexander, you know, took Egypt from the Persians, okay, in uh, 332. And the Persians was very cruel, and the European is just as cruel. A lot of people try to lighten Alexander's conquest on Egypt. You know, a lot of people say, you know, that Egypt invited Alexander to come in and take Con, you know, take control because of the cruelty of the purse. And no motherfucker gonna invite no cracker or nobody else to come in and do better than the last oppressor. That's bullshit. You know, this is to lighten, you know, his brutality and his thievery and his destruction of ancient Egypt. But this is when the European got any power into Egypt is with Alexander, okay? He founded the city of uh, Alexandria in 331 BC, okay? And this is gonna be the jump off for the Europeans in Africa. They had no other, uh, they had no real power in no other city in Egypt because they was hated. You see what I'm saying? So. They, most of the Europeans, if not all the Europeans, the Greeks and the Europe, you know, they resided in Alexander and Alexandria, okay? And that's where they, you know, you know, they performed all their government duties and this, that, and the third. Now you can see here that Aristotle, and we have to do, we have to do this. You understand what I'm saying? Was supposedly the teacher of uh, Alexander. We understand that there is no Aristotle, that this is all embellishment of history, but this is what is taught because they try to show that Alexander was educated and you know what I'm saying? This is why he constructed the city of Alexandria. This is why his vision of uh, constructing the great library of Alexandria, it wasn't really the great library of Alexandria, it was the great library of ancient Egypt, okay? The, which the, you know, the, the Ptolemies, you know, after, you know, trying to be uh, accepted in the ancient Egyptian uh, deity ship, they wanted to be worshiped like the Pharaoh, you know, they rose, but the people would not accept them. And so, you know, under that, they closed down the temples and confiscated all of the sacred writings in all the temples around Egypt. And from that became the foundation of what you call the Library of Alexandria. The Greek didn't even have a goddamn alphabet, okay? Let known, and you can't even find one goddamn book out of Egypt, let's known a goddamn library, okay? So this is the fundamental jump off for not just uh, the Greeks, but the Romans too, because the Romans borrowed from the Greeks, and that's why you have to start with the Greeks. You see what I'm saying? Everything that, you know, Alexander was really, you know, you know, the jump off for the European world. The Romans, you know, tried to emulate the Greeks. You see what I'm saying? It was Alexander that even conquered Persia in 334 BC. 
And this is where you get all that mithraism and, you know, the Catholics in Mithra and this, that, and the third. We're going to get off into that. It was Alexander that conquered, and you know, most of the known world. And he's not great. He's a, he's a freak. He's a Greek. You see what I'm saying? There's nothing great about the man. You see what I'm saying? He destroyed civilizations that were hundreds of thousands of years old, older than his people coming up out them damn caves, okay? So here we see the so-called Greek philosophers got to start there, got to start there because, you know, they speak as if these are the founders of all thought, you know, that they have some type of institution up in, in, in uh in Greece, which they did not have. These men are created. They know different than Santa Claus or nobody else. When you don't have a history, you have to create one. And so these people were looking in, you know, looking at civilizations that were hundreds of thousands of years old. You understand? And they felt they felt like infants to the rest of the world. So in that, you understand, they began a system of creating all these fallacies about, you know, uh these philosophers who brought so many sciences and arts to the world. And that's the same thing what the Romans did. Exactly what they did with Socrates created these philosophers is what they did with all them goddamn popes because they had no history at that time, okay? Even when you get up to the 1400s with the printing press, they had no books. Just because you got the printing press, you ain't got no books because the populace is ignorant, okay? So, you know, all this talking about their, that Peter was the first pope and all of that, that's embellishment of a lie, you understand, to give yourself some authority that you would not have if, it, you know, based on right teachings, you know what I'm saying, and right historical teachings. So you see that Alexander was from Macedonia. The Ptolemies was from Macedonia. That's an area right uh, above Greece, okay, savage. They were savages, barbarians, no literature, this, that, and the third. Uh, you see here, this is Ptolemy. This was one of the generals of Alexander, okay? Ptolemy the first, Soter. And, his, and Soter means savior. You understand what I'm saying? And it was his image, you know, his spiritual image that we know today as Serapis where they took two deities of ancient Egypt and combined them, Osiris and Apis, the Apis bull, which was sacred in Egypt. And so the two combined deities became Osiris. But in the Greco-Roman world, it was known as Serapis. So Ptolemy assumed this Osiris-like spirit. He assumed it. You know, it was given to him by some some Uncle Tom niggas, had, and they was mixed breeds. They weren't full-blooded Africans, and you know that's what they call the Coptics. And we gotta quit acting like the Coptics is full-blooded Africans. They're not full-blooded Africans. You know, this is why they say, you know, even in the Medu Nada, that Coptic is the last uh, stage of the ancient Egyptian language. And, you know, because the Greeks know that these were they bastardized children. You understand what I'm saying? These were they bastardized children. You know what I'm saying? They sympathizers. And so by using the Coptics, that gives them a back door into Egypt that they would not have. So this Soter is where you get the Savior. Serapis the Savior. And then what his, his grandson... Well, I think that was his grand. I will. I get to it. His name was Epiphanes, Epiphanes Eucharist, and you're going to see that they got the Eucharist in the Catholic Church. That's when they give mass, and you see the cup, and you see the wine, and you see, uh, uh, you know, the bread, which is in the form of a a sun disc. You see the cross in the middle, which is the sun, 
but the 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 child uh the chalice and you know the performing of, of mass is Eucharist. And you're gonna see not only was Savior taken from the Ptolemies as Serapis, that even the Eucharist was taken from the Ptolemies. And a lot of people don't bring that up. So this was the extent of Ptolemy one so tear, and you're gonna see that Serapis was at his time taken all through uh, North uh, Africa. Serapis would later become Jesus, much, much later, okay? Much, much later, okay? Well, you know, the J wasn't created until the 16th century, so it wasn't no Jesus, okay? They used the I, you see what I'm saying? And and they used the uh, Z, which is uh, also uh, uh, compatible with, you know, before the J. You know, you get the I and you get the Z. And that's why you hear the Spanish, you know, when they call Jesus' name, they say, hey, Zeus. A lot of people got on the internet, well, that's not correct, motherfucker. How, what kind of coincidence would it be for two deities, and we're talking about major deities, to be pronounced in the same way? That's a hell of a damn coincidence. Two deities to be pronounced major deities. You're talking about Zeus is the king of the Greco-Roman pantheon, and Jesus is the king of the Christian pantheon, okay? And we're going to show not only that it's not a coincidence that many other Greco-Roman deities before uh, Serapis worship. That's what I'm going to say, Serapis worship. You see what I'm saying? Because, you know, until you get the Bible, you don't have, the image is, is there. But you got to understand, he don't even have no literature. You see what I'm saying? You don't even got no literature for Christianity until the printing press. You don't have no literature. So just like when you, you, you think of Zeus and, and you think of Venus and all the Greco-Roman deities, yes, they worshiped him. But those deities never had no literature, no holy books for Zeus. There was no holy book for Zeus. There was no holy book for Hades and Pluto or none of that. You know, so the veneration was through, you know, uh, freestyle veneration. You know, ceremonies that they created, you know, but it was a freestyle worship. Was no Bible for the Greco-Roman deities, and there was no book for the Christians or the Catholics until the printing press, okay? And I mean that from the bottom of my heart because you don't, you know, until you can teach the people a, a basic alphabet, and then you, you know, there's no, it's no, it's no need for books. You understand what I'm saying? There was no need for books. They didn't, because the populace, was an ignorant populace. They did everything freestyle, okay? So that's what I mean by Jesus didn't have no, and they were arguing over, you know, how they were, uh, the rules and regulations of, of Christianity. That's why they had so many ecumenical councils. If there was a book there written by God and all them books was there from the very beginning, it wouldn't have been shit to argue about because they would have had rules and regulations. That right there is key. They argued for a thousand years whether Jesus had a human nature or was it just a Christ-like, you know, spirit that, you know, we was discussing, you know. But, you know, when they tried to say that, you know, because for, you know, the Africans, the Christ-like spirit it's just that, it's a spirit. It wasn't in the flesh. It wasn't nobody who could profess to be Christ because the spirit could come up in anybody, you know? But now they want you to worship the white man's image. And so he tried to monopolize on the Christ spirit, that it was only him that was Christ. And the people fought over that for a thousand years. And 
And so, again, if it was a Bible with rules and regulations all in, in a Bible, it wouldn't have been no need for that. So that in itself showing you that there was no book in the beginning, okay? Because th this was a very new religion and they, they hadn't even constructed the, the basic rules and regulations of the damn worship. You see what I'm saying? So here you looking at uh, Ptolemy three, okay? Uh, uh, you Xerxes, okay? And you can look on his coin and see that he's a reflection of Serapis. Now this is the Serapis temple, okay? Ptolemy the uh, third is the one that constructed the Serapis temple, okay? It, uh, the image was constructed under his uh, his uh, grandfather, okay? It was constructed, the image was constructed under his grandfather, but the temple was constructed under Ptolemy the third. Now you got to understand that uh, each successive ruler, each successive Ptolemy was called the vicar of Serapis, just like the Pope is called uh, the vicar of Christ. Uh, like Christ, he is Christ on the earth, you know? And, and another thing, what a difference between Protestantism and Catholicism is that in uh, uh, Protestantism is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Catholicism, it's the Father, the Son, and the church. And then, uh, and the Pope is the head of the church. He's the third, he's the third, he's the third piece of the Trinity. You understand what I'm saying? He's the third uh, uh, leg of the uh, Trinity, not the spirit, okay? Not the spirit. And so you see Alexandria is right down there on the Mediterranean. That's where the Greeks, when they came to Egypt, where they stayed because they wanted to be able to get the hell up out of there if our people ever revolted to the point that they, you know, they couldn't put down the revolt. So they stayed right there on the Mediterranean, and that's where they stored all of our uh, literature. You understand? They took hundreds of thousands of scrolls from all over Egypt, and they stored them there, okay, to, to punish us for not worshiping them. You see what I'm saying? And again, that, and so this is what they say, this was what's left of uh, the Serapium, okay? I have no validation on that at all. You see what I'm saying? But this is what they say is the, uh, now you see here, you see this is where, you know, the Greeks were supposed, this is a goddamn lie, this is embellishment. Embellishment is when you, take a lie and then you, you decorate it and put all type, you know, it's, extend the lie. You understand what I'm saying? Extend it and make it even more grandiose. You understand the Greeks were illiterate. How the hell, and the thing is, you talking about the library of Alexandria supposedly contained over 500,000 scrolls. You can't go to Greece and find a fucking library of five scrolls, less known 500,000. You didn't, you know, you got to show development for such a grandiose library. You know, you ain't gonna get, you got to be able to show a library of 50, 100, 200. You develop up, okay? And the Greeks have not produced any major manuscripts from the ancient world first and foremost because they did not have paper. They did not have an alphabet. You ain't gonna have no goddamn alphabet if you ain't got no paper. You understand? No pen, no ink. And so you got a lot of Greeks, you know, they got a few little scrolls that they have when they came into Egypt. It's on papyrus. You see what I'm saying? But they have not one scroll one scroll from the ancient world uh, from Greece, from Greece. So for them to come to Egypt and try to claim the library, see, this is the foundation of everything. 
This is the foundation of all their religions and shit. This, that, and the third. The library was the library of all our confiscated scrolls, okay? And they were hoping that the Africans would interpret the information for them. But our people was very resilient. They did not give them the information. The few priests that they did have, they were, you know, they were small time priests. They weren't no big priests. They didn't have no real knowledge of a lot of them scrolls. A lot of them scrolls was ancient, three and four thousand years old. And only the most wise of the uh, priests would have been able to even try to understand that information. And just like anybody, you know, when the when the conquerors was coming in, the the, the more uh, high ranking priests went back up the river to Ethiopia. You know, just like when somebody conquering your land, you're not gonna let your high up get, you know, you know, conquer, you know, to be uh, you know, taken hostage. So they took the uh, more advanced priests up the river. So they didn't have no opportunity to uh, translate any of that information. And so they were so goddamn uh, upset at us, you know, for not being able to get that information that eventually they would just burn the shit up, straight up. That's exactly what happened to it. You see what I'm saying? And so we lost so much. You know, that's probably, the, they say, the greatest crime in intellectual human history. You understand? Because you're talking about, you know, you're talking about hundreds of thousands of years worth of knowledge that just went up just because these people hated us so much that we would not give them our sacred knowledge that they would rather burn it up. You understand what I'm saying? Then have us to take back our own wisdom. You see, so again, you see these Greeks in here, and, and and what's so crazy is that all the wonders of the world, you know, you got the seven wonders of the world. One was the pyramids, and the other six was Greek, Greco, well, there was Greek. You understand, even the lighthouse of Valley, ain't none of that shit ever been seen. You know what I'm saying? None of it is still standing. And it would have came 3,000 years after the pyramid. So if they had such an advanced knowledge, ask yourself, where the hell is the creations of the Greeks? It's going to show you that the Catholics, is, the, which is the Romans, let's just be real about it. You can say Catholicism or whatever. The Catholicism is nothing but the carryover of the Roman Empire. That's all it is. The Pope is going to take the place of Caesar at a you know at a later date. You know what I'm saying? At a later date, the Pope, but he's going to take he's going to be a, a spirit, and yet it's still he's still a political leader because the Vatican is a state. It is a state, so he's also a head of state, but he's also a, a spiritual head. So he adopted that from Egypt, because that's the uh, Pharaoh. The Caesar was not divinely ordained. The Pharaoh was divinely ordained. He is the direct bloodline of Osiris. Who was like so his son, Heru, became the, uh, the next appointed king. And the Pharaohs is called the son of uh, the Heru. He's the Heru. He's the Heru at his time of court coronation. You see what I'm saying? So the Pharaoh is a divine king, okay? He's, a, he's the head of uh, the spiritual uh, institution, and he's also the head of state. So that's the difference between the Caesar and the Pope. The Pope want to take it up a level, okay? He wants to take it up a level. So you see right here, this is uh, Ptolemy. This is uh, the fifth, Epiphanes. And a part of his name was Eucharistos. Okay, so now not only is the Savior, Ptolemy, the Savior, Serapis, the Savior, you also got the Eucharist coming up out of the worship of Serapis. We're going to get off into that. You see right there, Eucharist, 
the Christian ceremony commemorating the Last Supper in which bread and wine are consecrated and consumed. That's the Eucharist, okay? And so you see right here, Patala, now it's supposedly at his, under his rulership is when they constructed the Rosetta Stone. And so the only part on that stone that is readable is the so-called Greek. It's not the Greek alphabet, okay? It's an African alphabet that has been applied to the Greek language, okay? And on that, you see the term Epiphanes Eucharistos, showing that this is where you get the Eucharist, okay? So when you see the cup on top of uh, Serapis' head, and you see today the chalice with the wine in it, and which also extends the Bacchus, it also extends to Dionysus. We're going to get off of that. This is where the Eucharist comes from. Now, that's right there is Constantine. And when you talk about Catholicism, that's where Catholicism starts. It started with Constantine. Don't want to hear nothing about no goddamn Peter. Okay? Did not start with Peter. Constantine, and so Peter is not in existence any goddamn way. Okay? There is no Peter at the, I never heard Constantine even speak about Peter. You see, because there is no Bible at that time. You see what I'm saying? There is no Jesus in Serapis. They have no literature. Okay? There is no literature on the Bible. That's a damn lie. That's a damn lie. You don't have no mass production of any Bibles in that time. Okay? Prove it. You had, you just, you know, we just proved that the Dead Sea Scrolls was a lie. Okay? They don't have no literature from the ancient world. And you got to quit letting them play on you. Looking at this timeline, you see that in 313, uh, Imperial Christian. Okay, you see Council of Nicaea 325. You see the early Byzantine in the Western uh, Rome Empire 476. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you see some of these dates here that we're going to get off into. I'm going to make them much more clear if, as we move along. Now, this is the dangers of Christian. Now, listen to this. But this is going to... It's going to clear up some things on this Peter and this Pope shit immediately. Because until the time of Constantine, Christianity was Serapis worship. Okay, what in Serapis was the Christ. Okay, Serapis was the Christ. Okay, he was the Eucharistos. He was the Savior. Okay, was well, no Jesus. Okay, so you see that. The, fa the dangers faced by the Christians in Rome meant that they had to meet in secret, okay? They usually they use, uh, usually use underground tombs as they were literally out of sight. Rome had a large number of poor people within its population, and Christianity continued to grow, okay? In A.D. 313, the Emperor Constantine made Christianity legal and for the first time, okay? And for the first time, okay? They were allowed to openly worship. Now that's key because this is, I'm gonna come right on over here and I'm gonna click back. This is in uh, St. Peter's Basilica, the Vatican City. You see all these goddamn popes. And you got, it starts with Peter in 67, 64, whatever, whatever one that, and it goes down to eight, you know, to all the successful popes. And the question I'm gonna ask is how they got goddamn popes in Rome at the time that Christianity was outlawed. You see what I'm saying? Right there, that should just open up right there and say, well, where the fuck was he at? Where was he at? And you know, underground, some goddamn. How the fuck you gonna have an institution and it's outlawed? Y'all busy trying to keep y'all ass alive, letting on have a pope in the institution. So that show you right there, they lying like a motherfucker. There ain't no goddamn pope. It's no Peter. Let's be clear about that. But we ain't, we'll argue that 
at a different time. Okay? And so you go back and it says in AD 313, the Emperor Constantine made Christianity legal. Okay? And for the first time, they were allowed to uh, openly worship. Okay, now I don't even have to, I'm gonna come right on out of that. And so you, when you go to the Catholic church, you see that they say that Peter was the first Pope. And, and from that point on, the Roman Catholic church was an institution. Now, we're gonna see that when Constantine adopted Serapis worship, okay? When he adopted Serapis worship, he wasn't in Rome. He moved his capital to Constantinople, okay? And you see right there, Constantinople is at the top. It's in the red part. That's the, his new capital, named after himself. Now, he established that city in 324 AD, and it was dedicated to him in 330 AD. It was named after him, Constantinople, okay? and. You see that uh, you got two parts of the Roman Empire. You got the Western Roman Empire ruled by Rome, and you got the Eastern Roman Empire ruled at Constantinople, okay? And so the, the Constantinople is the capital, is the capital of the Roman Empire, not Rome at this time, okay? And so let me come over here. Uh, this uh, church right here is the Hagia Sophia, okay? Now, this is the world's first Christian church. Ain't no Roman, ain't no Peter, ain't no Peter's Basilica, none of that. That shit don't exist. If Constantine moved his capital to Constantinople, then you should understand that that was the seat of Serapis worship. That was the seat. That's where, and the head of the Hagia Sophia was the Papa, was the head of the church, was the head of Catholicism, okay? And we're going to prove that. And that right there is uh, just, that's, uh, Justinian, okay, who, was the, who constructed that church, okay? And he constructed that church, if I'm not mistaken, he constructed that church in 537, okay? 537 uh, AD. And from 537 to 1453 AD, that was the seat of power for the Catholic Church. There is no basilica in fucking uh, Rome of no damn Catholic Church. St. Peter's Basilica was finished in 1626, okay? In 1626. And even if they did have a basilica in Rome, you understand, previous of that, it still wasn't the seat of power, okay? That's the, uh, you see St. Peter's Basilica, that came in 1626, but the uh, Hagia Sophia came in 537, okay? And this was the, the Catholic Christian seat of power and the bishop, the patriarch of the Hagia Sophia was the head of the Catholic Church. They're facts. And so you looking at Turkey and you see that Constantinople, or, which is modern day Istanbul, is in Turkey. It's modern day Turkey. And when you go into so-called you know, revelations, which we understand to be written much later, you see that the seven churches of revelations is in Turkey, okay? When you're looking at all of the ecumenical councils, okay, you see the first council, and that's when they're trying to argue out the rules of Serapis worship. See, they got, they in trouble because you didn't took from ancient Egypt the religion of ancient Egypt, and you, you're trying to Romanize it. You're trying to Romanize it. And so everybody is fighting on how the story should go. They ain't got no story yet. If they had a goddamn Bible, 
they wouldn't be arguing over the shit. Why would the hell they be having all these? If you got a Bible with all the rules and regulations, what the fuck is the council for? They don't have no book. So you see that Nasiya, you see uh, the, the council of Nasiya, you see the second council, which uh, ecumenical council, Constantinople, you see they got the council of Ephesus, you got the council of Chalcedon, all of that is in Byzantine. All of that is in the uh, eastern portion of the Roman Empire. If Rome was, if Rome was the capital of Europe, I mean of Christianity, don't you think that all those ecumenical councils should have been at St. Peter's? Why would the hell they be having all these ecumenical councils in Byzantine, huh? If St. Peter's and the Pope in Rome is running goddamn the Catholic Church. That right there should be a red flag up right there. Okay? That's it. So this is where they're starting to formulate what you know of today as Jesus the Christ. Okay? Now, this is the church in it's it's Istanbul today, but it's Constantinople. Haggy uh Irene. And this is where the first council of Constantinople took place. So I'm showing you exactly where the, this is the church of Mary in Ephesus. It's no longer standing, but this is where the third uh, council took place, okay? And so as we can see that, you know, after, you know, the burning of, of, of the great library, uh, the fall of the Ptolemies, Okay, in 30 uh in 30 BC, the last Cleopatra, you know, she fell to the uh to the Roman Empire. At that point, the Romans was done with that. They were done with the Alexandria, and so they packed up what they wanted from Alexandria and they moved it to Constantinople from the Serapian, Serapium to the Hagia Sophia. So in, in Alexandria, the Serap Serapium was the, the source of power for the Ptolemies. In Constantinople, the Hagia Sophia was the center of power, okay? And this is where Serapis became Jesus. And you can see quite you know, clearly that this is the same deity. Now, a lot of people think that, you know, uh, Serapis, let me, excuse me, y'all, let me get some water. Excuse me, let me get some water right quick. Okay, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, it just jumped from, you know, uh, Osiris, Isis, and Heru to uh, Mary, uh, uh, Jesus, and uh, Joseph. That's not true, okay? You're going to see that they, they Romanize Isis. Okay, they Romanize ISIS. Uh, they, they even Romanize Hey Ruth. Now, this is a Coptic. This is a Coptic. Now, I don't know why people act like there's no evidence of the Coptics in Egypt. They are, they are bastardized race. People keep saying, speaking as if the Coptics are pure, purely African. They're not. They, 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 you know, Egypt has been conquered. So the area down by Alexandria on the Mediterranean is race mixture going on. So they got a lot of mixed loyalties, mixed bread, 
You see what I'm saying? And so the cop, the cop gets easily adopted. Great, great, you know, Greek culture because they was partially Greek. So you see right here the Serapis, you see the European ISIS, and now that's that's clear. Damn, they look like the same damn individual. It cause it is. Okay? Jesus is Serapis. Okay? And Serapis came first. So you see that, you know, even Pompeii, ISIS, the worship of ISIS was even at Pompeii. You know what I'm saying? So they could, you know, what they did, you see them right here too. And you can see clearly that Serapis got some other de Greco Roman deities in his ass. You can see him down there with the three headed dog, which is a uh, service, which is at the gates of hell. You see what I'm saying? So, the, you know, Osiris being the god of the underworld, this was their way of, you know, synchronizing their culture with our culture, raping our culture, because we never had them symbolisms in our culture. That's uh, Cerebus, okay, that you see at the gates of hell. Now, you see right here, you see the queen mother, uh, the Hathor mother, Isis, with Heru, the child. You see the king Osiris right there. Now, what you what replaced uh, hey, Rue, the son, was Hippoc Hippocrates, okay? Hippocrates, okay? Which is the European form of hey, Rue, okay? And you see him sometimes with his uh, finger to his lip, was a god of silence, secret, secrets, and confidentiality in the Hellenistic religion developed in Ptolemaic Alexandria. So even before they got to Jesus, even before they got to the European Jesus, you know, they had already uh, Romanized Heru under Hippocrates. Okay, they had already Romanized the uh, Isis, and they, uh, let me see, let me get out of this. They just got up, they got rid of, they got rid of Osiris. Let me come right, I'm gonna come back to that. I'm gonna come back to it. They got rid of Osiris all together. Okay, I'll come back. That was uh Theodosius. So a lot of people show it as if this was you know, it just they just went from Osiris or uh, Isis and Heru to some, you know, John and Jesus and Mary. That's not true. You see, now this is in the Cairo Museum. Now you see Isis with woolly hair. You see. She got kink in her hair. And this is uh, also an original statue of the god Osiris to show you that this is black deities, okay? These are black deities. Again, showing you the black Osiris. I use our, our queen mother, our most Nefertari as our set, okay? And you see that these are black deities. But then when they came in, they replaced Osiris with Serapis, the demon deity. See, so this is a, a, a stone uh, carving in uh, the Cairo Museum. And you could clearly see that Isis is of a different race than Serapis. You can see that he got the Helios uh, headdress, uh, the sun crown coming from the back of his head. You could even see the goddamn uh, wreath around his head. You see what I'm saying? So the first thing they did was to take Osiris out of the Trinity, the divine Trinity, okay? Took Osiris out. And so here again, you already see, you see this shit on TV today, where, you know what I'm saying? The last summer ride, the last death, the last that, and the white man end up with somebody else walking. OK, he's still doing he did. That was the first thing he did when he came into ancient Egypt. OK, with to take Osiris out of the uh, Holy Trinity. And so you see right here that when you put Jesus next to, to Serapis, there is no doubt they try to make him a little look a little younger. You see what I'm saying? But 
you still understand that's exactly who it is, okay? And so when you could take Jesus and put his ass neck to fucking John Lennon, you know you in trouble. You know you in trouble. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, this is a homosexual. And y'all niggas got these homosexual de deities because all of the Greco-Roman deities are homosexual. Okay, so, you know, I don't see how Serapis, they ain't never shown no true love in Greco-Roman uh, deities with no damn woman. Zeus and Hera was always at odds because Zeus was a, a, a whore. Okay, he was always with an, another woman, tricking the woman, raping the woman, doing all type of crazy shit. So he was not true to hell. Okay, Osiris and Isis were true to each other to the very end. And even in his death, she came to his aid because she was so in love with him. So I don't understand how in the hell can a Caucasoid try to implant himself into a, a African love story, he know goddamn well, he, he in his right, in his own culture, in his own thinking, he's a homosexual. So he know he don't belong in that. And the Serapis is, is across the board. Most of the images of other profound uh, prophets is always in Serapis form. Okay, so it ain't just Jesus, Moses too. If it's any goddamn deity, or any prophet or anything, they try to create that prophet in the image of Serapis. Now, at the Council of Nicaea, they call the Council of Nicaea because of a brother. His name was Arius. And now they, they call it Arianism today. You see what I'm saying? And he said that when he looked at Serapis, he said, man, what is this? If you go back and see that this is the African woman and she got an African child, and then you got this motherfucker over here, white boy, he say, man, this motherfucker totally dissimilar to the father. He's totally dissimilar, he can't be the father. You understand what I'm saying? First, the father is a son deity, and in no way a white man can be the chosen one in a son deity. You know, in a sun uh, uh, religion, when you get triple degrees of uh, uh, skin cancer, you cannot be the chosen in a sun. So, I'll show you this for Nicaea, nature, okay? This is in the Bible. And you can clearly see that he's a brother. And he understands that the father is Osiris. You see what I'm saying? From Egypt. He said, no, I this all the way. You know, I got this white boy in here. And he's the father. You understand? You know, in aspects of Osiris and Heru. And this is what he, this is what Arius said about. He says, that God was not always the father, but that there was a period when he was not the father. Okay, what does he mean? How we how we looking out there? How we looking out there? Is everything moving? Bayro, how we looking, baby? Okay, I see. It. Okay, I had to. I had to. I had to. I didn't see it at first. I had to go in there and check my monitor to see if everything was good. All right, I had to go in there and check my monitor to see if everything was good. Okay, okay. Now I'm gonna go over that again. And he, you know, Aries broke it down to him, said that God was not always the father. And why is he saying that? Because uh, if there is no son, you know, the, in the in this this religion y'all trying to put together, 
you see what I'm saying? That, you know, there was a period that the, the sun didn't exist, okay? There was a period when the sun didn't exist. And so before the sun came into existence, then God was not even the father because it was no, he didn't have no begotten of, of God. So he was just God. He was just the almighty. And the, you know, and so, you know, he was trying to bring this Serapis image to reality that he's not a part of the all in all. He's not equal 